Good afternoon. I am Irvin Anderson, teach math here in the uh, School of Computing and Mathematics. I'm the Executive Director of AAMI, and I would like to welcome you all. I'm glad to see students coming out, some of our retired members of our administrative staff come out. This is the first AAMI program, and I hope to have many more. And they are enlightening and helps all students on campus. I would like to bring to you now a three-year member of AMI. He's currently the president of Saul, Mr. College Jones. Good afternoon and welcome. The African American Male Institute is funded by a matching grant from the University System of Georgia. The main goal of our AAMI program is to educate, retain, graduate African American males that attend college or university in Georgia. AAMI programs provide academic and social programming that will enlighten program participants to become educated contributing citizens in the community, the state, and our nation. The success of AAMI in its mission to provide for a better overall educational experience at GSW. And again, welcome, and I hope you enjoy the program. The introduction of our speaker will be given by a two-year member of AAMI. He serves as a senior peer mentor for AAMI. He'll be he will be graduating in 2014 this year, in which he will be receiving his BS in computer science. He was also featured in the American Association for State Colleges and University website for the first generation college student. And he is a member of GSW TRIO program. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Regina Miles. Our speaker today is a native of Osceola, Georgia. He is married to Takeda Hall and the father of three, who are Kaihi of 21, Langston, who is six, and Amber, who is two months old. He received a BS in psychology from Georgia Southwestern State University, a master's in business administration from the University of Phoenix, and is presently finishing his doctorate in educational leadership in the area of educational technology at the University of Phoenix. Currently, he is the Director of Instructional Technology at South Georgia Technical College. Our speaker is a strong advocate for fair educational, educational purposes for all. He serves on the board of Operation, Operation Save Our Youth, or in other words, OSOI. He is also a member of the Osceola branch of the NAACP, and he serves as the Vice President of Georgia Southwestern State University's Alumni Board. Our speaker for today is a proud and active member of Kappa, Kappa Alpha Psi in court. Let's give a warm hurricane welcome to Lamont Hall. Good evening. As he stated, my name is Lamont Hall and I've been in the same place that you were in at one time in life. My thing is, when I graduated from Georgia Southwestern, I looked at it like this. I've graduated. I owe Southwestern nothing. I paid for my classes. I've got my degree. But a few years after doing that, I realized I lost, I lost touch with the institution that gave me so much. And hopefully you can hear me, because I'm one of those that wonder when I talk. My thing is, the reason I joined Georgia Southwestern's Alumni Association, first of all, because a good friend of mine, Doug Moses, started encouraging me to come and take part. Secondly, once I got involved, I figured out my backbone educationally was Georgia Southwestern. Yeah, initially I thought I paid my money and I'm moving on. But this is my backbone. When Georgia Southwestern name sees, receives a black eye, I receive a black eye. When you walk away from here, if Georgia Southwestern receives a black eye, you receive a black eye. I sit on boards where we hire people, fire people, promote people. And one of the first things we look at is your educational facilities where you attended at. If you attend somewhere that's not accredited, mm, 
I don't know. If you tend somewhere where we question your educational program, uh, I don't know. Academic excellence on your level, because you are me, you make my backbone at this point. What you do at Southwestern makes me. True, I might be about to obtain a doctorate, but you, you make me. So I expect a lot out of you. Academic excellence, that's the main thing I'm looking for. Can anybody tell me what excellence is? Anybody? Speak up. OK, I'll tell you this. If these guys hadn't filled this front row, I had counted the number of tables on the back row. I was going to move everybody from the back row to the front. There's a saying out there. Those people who are comfortable all the time are people who are not making progress in life. So don't ever become comfortable. I'm one of those people, and my mom gets so upset with me sometimes, she say, you never stop. Because I feel like when I stop, I die. I want to excel. And this is what I tell people all the time. I say, if you pitch yourself against me, you, pitch, you set yourself up for failure. Because I'm not going to fail. When it comes to excellence, again, now I'm going to ask this question. Can I have somebody to tell me what excellence is? Or your definition of excellence? And I went to Webster, and it said, the state of being excellent. So I asked, what is excellent? Very good of its kind. A lot of people think academic excellence, you're all A's, 4.0. My roommate, and as Mr. Wilson could attest, graduated from Georgia Southwestern with a 3.76 GPA. Doug is now a partner at Malden and Jenkins. We still keep in contact. I admired that about Doug. Doug did what it took. Doug had the ability to make that 3.76. But notice I said of like kind. Everybody can't make that 3.76. You might be that 2.5 student, but believe me, you need to be the best 2.5 that there can be. You need to be that 2.5 that nobody want to face, as the basketball players probably say, in the clutch. All right? I'm one of those people, I don't speak a lot. I like to give you activities. But let me ask you this. What is, to, what is one of the key factors to excellence? You're achieving excellence here at Georgia Southwestern academically. Anybody have a clue what's one of the key factors? And it's not just with excellence. Hard work is one. Determination, definitely a part of it. And it's something that we can all do, but a lot of us don't do it well. And guys, it's sad to say when it comes between us and the ladies, they do it a lot better than we do. So now I'm going to ask that question again. I just gave it away. What do women do better than we do, guys? Communication. If you can't communicate your goal, what do you expect from your instructors? I'm the director of instructional technology. I run our online program. And what I tell people about learning in the online environment, why I like it better than in the class, think about it like this. I've talked, I've talked too, so I understand this and I've been through this. In the online environment, when I give you a discussion question, every student has to answer, meaning you got to communicate with me. In the classroom, we have those students that sit in the back and they look at it like, if I sit back here, don't cause no trouble, don't bother nobody, you're not going to call on me, but you know what I say goes for the back seats? You don't cause no trouble, you don't get called on, you answer no questions, but guess what else happens? You don't get as much as that person sitting right here. I learned something in church. Sit close to the front. Because when you sit in the back, it's a lot of distractions that happen in the middle that might just cause you to miss that word. Like I said, I'm an activity person. Is there a best group of best friends that came here together from high school that feel like you just know each other inside and out? Anybody? A boyfriend and girlfriend? Nobody here with that boyfriend and girlfriend? Well, good friends. Y'all basketball players, right? Yeah. How long have y'all known each other? A couple months now. 
couple of months. So you have to mesh and kind of know what he's thinking when you're coming up with the ball. You got to know if he's going to cut through the lane and you can just dish it off. So you think you can communicate with him and make him understand what you're saying? Yeah. Both of y'all come on. Some of y'all that's in the back might want to come off to the side so y'all can see this. Dang. Feel small with this here. Who's the communicator? Who's the communicator? He's the communicator. Yeah. Communicator, have a seat. Okay. Listener, have a seat. I'm explaining this situation. I'm explaining the situation before they start. Oftentimes, you're in the classroom. Like I said, I've been an instructor. As a student, if you don't communicate your problems to me, I don't know how to work with you. Not only do you need to communicate your problems, but you need to communicate them well. And if you don't communicate them well, I can't help you. Because when you come into a classroom, based on what class you're coming in, that instructor have assumptions about what you know and what you don't know. This activity, do it with people that you know or you feel you know. And you'll find out how well you communicate with each other. All right, what you need to do, just dump out your bags, and like I said, some of y'all might want to come to the front to see this. It's simple, but it shows you the lack of communication and what the lack of communication does. All right, fellas, I'm going to tell you what you got to do. I'm going to give you one minute. What's your name? Matthias. Matthias? Yeah. Josh. Josh. Josh, you're the communicator. Yep. Matthias, you can't talk. You can't make no sounds. You just got to build what Josh tells you to build. All right. All right. You got the same blocks. Well, you've got blocks. He's got blocks. Okay. You've got to build something, but you've got to tell him how to build it. Okay. And make sure everybody hears you when you build it. Okay. Go ahead, Josh. All right. <clears throat> okay, you got two red circle pillars. You're going to put them side by side, a couple inches apart. And then you're gonna take this little, a little triangle and put it on top of the left red circle or oval. And then you're gonna take a blue one and put it on the right one. And now you're gonna take a wood colored, um, a wood colored piece and put it under both of the orange blocks. And now you're gonna take a circle wood color ones. It's smaller than the red ones and you're gonna put it in the middle. And now you're gonna take a square blue block and put it right on top of the ones in the middle. Don't knock anything off. All right, Josh, stop. Look at what Matthias has and look at what you've got. Matthias, look at what Josh got. <laughs> you see the differences? That seems extremely simple. Now, hold on, fellas. That seems extremely simple. You just got shapes. Think about it. A teacher has 25, 30 students in their class. You're different shapes. I'm one of those people. I don't learn from you writing notes on the board. I learn to team with people to take good notes, and I listen. Because I'm one of those. I don't write as fast as you talk. So that's why, to reach academic excellence, you got to know your weaknesses. You got to know your plan and you've got to work that plan. And when I say work a plan, I'm not talking about work it every two, three weeks. You got to work that plan. Every single day, you got to do something if it's nothing but read one article about what you ultimately want to do. When my son went off to Morehouse, the first thing I asked him is what you want your major to be. Computer science. He liked it because he's been around me and I play with computers all day. Okay, computer science is a wide field. What do you want to do in the field? That way I can find somebody that does that for a living and I can put you with them. Because it'll be bad to graduate with a computer science degree and you don't want to do that. That'll be four years of your life wasted. So all I was asking him to do with me is communicate. When you communicate your wants, believe me, you've got people around you that's going to make that happen. And when I say work your plan every day, it's an every day, all day thing. Because the moment you stop working your plan, you gotta think somebody else is working that same plan and they're working it just a little harder than you. 
And believe me, with the job market, you want to be one of the best. All right? Now, from the instructor aspect of it, now I'm going to do something. You can talk. You can ask questions. So we can communicate two ways. So now tear down what you've got. And I'm going to tell you, I kind of set them up. He has some pieces that he don't. And that goes back to an instructor. When you walk into a class, you should all be on the same plane in a perfect world. You should all have the same equipment. But if you can't communicate that you don't have that equipment, you're in trouble. All right? Now, Josh, you tell him what to build. You can question. You can stop him. Whatever you got to do. No, it don't get that good. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, stop. Turn around and look at what you got. I can correct one move that he made in the beginning, and they'll be pretty much the same. But this comes from simple communication. It's a lot of other questions he could have asked that would have made it easier. I've seen this game done several times. You know who done the best at this? And you would be shocked. Well, not shocked. There's a blind lady that worked for Habitat. When you give her the ability to communicate with you, she can build whatever you ask her to build. I mean, you can go 20, 30 pieces deep. She will build because if you give her the opportunity to question you, she can build anything you want her to build. Thanks, fellas. That, that's, but basically, that, that's just communication. Now, after you graduate, you've done all this communication and you graduate, guess what? You've got a responsibility. And I don't know the exact words they say, but I can around about, you know, I can tell you around about the way. The president will say with all the rights, the privileges, and responsibilities that go with your degree, he's granting those to you. Rights and responsibilities. Guys, you're in a place that a million other people would die to be in. I come from a community, a lot of kids wouldn't be able to tell you what's the difference between an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, or a doctorate. They just know you go to college to get it. Me? What my responsibility is, is to reach those kids that are not where I'm at that don't have the parent support that I had. After I got my master's, I started doing something, and it made me realize how much attention people pay to me, or younger kids pay to me. I started a softball league. I solicit for money. I started a softball league. Every year in a small town of about 11,000 people, I have an average of 150 to 200 students, or kids playing, between the ages of four and 15. I make sure they can play and get a t-shirt, they can play free. Why free? Because in my community, $30 for recreation might be the difference between mom and daddy being able to pay the light bill or not. What does it mean for me? I have to, I burn about three or four tanks of gas, which I'll do that anyway and just, just running around. But ultimately, I'm helping a lot of kids. 
Not only am I exposing them to athletics, I'm exposing them to adults who care. Because my thing is, if you ever played sports, if you had that great high school coach, if you had that great coach in middle school, you still got a link with them. When you see them, your face will light up. That's just the athletic side of things. For some of y'all that are deeply academic, that math teacher that got you over that hump, you remember that person. So my thing is, I try to link these kids with adults that care because they're giving up their time to deal with them. I love to be called coach. I'm not a true coach, but I love to be called coach because that's a form of respect. That's my duty to reach back and help these kids. You, you might say, I'm just a college student. I'm trying to get by. I'm having to ask mom and daddy for every dime I've got. You might be the only hope that that kid has. You might be the only one that that kid listened to. Believe me, I've worked with younger kids. I've worked with, I think all kids are at risk. That's just my take on it. But I've worked at D, for DJJ. I've done consulting for them for seven years. I used to have a kid that would holler across the campus at me when I first walked on the campus and just called me all kind of names. But I had the opportunity to get in his face one day and talk to him one on one. And he backed up and said, Mr. Lamont, I didn't realize you did all that. You were cool like that. Ultimately, I started bringing him books. He was like, you read this? Yeah. I'm no different than you. So look at the kids that are around you. You're no different than that kid. You might have had one more opportunity than he had. That's the difference between you being here and him being there. Ultimately, when that kid got ready to go home, I just happened to be on the campus. He sent for me. And yeah, it was a grown man in there crying with a teenager because of the things he said to me and what I meant to him, and it changed his behavior there. I still keep in contact with that kid. Because for me, that's a success story. That's what my life's all about, is reaching somebody else. It's not about Lamar. You will learn when you give of yourself an academic excellence that you reach, bring somebody up to, a next, to the next level, you're good to go. Now, I'm going to end this up with just giving you one more game that everybody can take part in, and just to show you how important communication is. So my thing is, if you don't ask questions in class, you don't talk to your instructor. Could I get two people to help me out with this? Pass these out. You're going to be lost. So take the time, talk to your instructors. Make sure everybody get one. Let me have one. Talk to your instructors. You're here for a purpose. And I often used to tell students when I was teaching, I teach at a two-year institution, so my thing is, I used to tell them you can do one or two things. You can bust your butt for two years, and in your case, you can bust your butt for four years. Work. I mean, you can bust your butt for four years and live a good life. Or you can come here and goof off for four years and work hard for the rest of your life. Honestly, I think you would rather live a good life. And then one more example why they're passing this out that I used to give my students. And it's something that you see every day and you probably don't think about it. There's a man outside digging a ditch. He's lucky if he makes $7 an hour. So he work a whole day. Can anybody tell me what he makes? An eight hour day, he makes $56. A doctor walks in his doctor's office in the room with you. He look in your ear. You check your pulse and stick the stethoscope on you, tell you take a deep breath and say, okay, here, get this to the nurse. And he walks out. If you get out of there between you and your insurance owing him $200, you're doing good. But who would you rather be, that man that's in the sun or in the cold all day, every day, making $56? And there's nothing wrong with that. Or that man that's getting $250 off of you for just talking to you for all of two minutes. That's what academic excellence offer you. So everybody should have this paper by now. If you got um, something to write with, oh, I'll give you mine. Um, what I want you to do on the side where the number one is in the upper left-hand corner, that's the side we're starting on. 
I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I want you to start circling from one on up. Ready? Go. From one up, in order. Circle. Like one, two, three, four. Oh, 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 yeah. See, I didn't communicate well with you. All right, stop. Anybody get 30? Yeah. Anybody got more than 11? Anybody got more than 15? 18, 18 is the highest. Now, I'm gonna tell you what the deal is with communication. And hold your paper. On the back side, you're gonna notice there's more numbers. Take that paper, fold it in half the long way. Now take it and fold it in half the other way. Now open it back up. I'll tell you this. This is communication for you. This is how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Let's see how far you can get. Ready? Go. The other side, the opposite side with more numbers. I think I'll give you guys one. Got five seconds. All right, stop. Anybody, what was the high? 18? Anybody got more than 18? You got 20. Anybody got higher than 20? 23? Anybody higher than 23? What this goes to show you. And I'm going to tell you this too. It goes to show you with a little more direction, you get a little bit farther. Meaning, all directions are not just volunteer to you. You have to ask for them. And he went to 23. From 18 to 23, that don't seem like a lot. But I'll tell you something else that was in the mix of that that you didn't realize. You realize there's a whole lot more numbers that you got to scramble through on the back than it was on the front. So I created more problems for you, but you still got farther simply because I communicated to you that it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Guys, if you want to be excellent at what you do, you got to know how to communicate. Not only do you know how to communicate, you got to find those people that know the things that you don't know. I was lucky. When I came here to Southwestern, I had Mr. Wilson. I had Mr. A. I had a Oris Bryant at the time. I had Miss Cater. And then we had a librarian, Miss McLaughlin, who's no longer with us. She's at Albany State now. My thing is find those people who know who knows the system. Go question them. Because I'm one of those people, when students come to me, if I know, believe me, I sell it to them quick. And I'm not for money, but I give it up. I had a student to come to me this morning, him and his mother, walks in. And they was, well, she was explaining the situation. I had to politely stop her. I said, ma'am, don't take no offense to this. He's grown at this point. Let him talk to me. And it wasn't to offend her, but at that point, he should be talking for himself. I said, I have no issues with you bringing your mother because she might understand things and can explain it to you better than I can. But my thing is, communicate for yourself. That's a learning process, OK? And for you fellas, that's also becoming a man. Right out here in front of the old gym, my mom was doing this when graduation was over. And I'm like, what are you doing? She was like, boy, the hand is cut off. And she was real serious. So I thank you all for your time. Thank you for inviting me back to Georgia Southwestern, which I feel is my home as well. And have a good day.